Mm-hmm. 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 Hi. It's nice to finally talk to you. Are you having a happy Halloween? This is as good a time as any to have fear on your mind. I remember an anecdote that I like about someone seeing a deadly snake out of the corner of their eye. Being reasonably frightened, they jumped away, then found that the snake had been replaced with a plastic bag, caught in a breeze. But sometimes, the reverse happens, if you catch my drift. I know a story along these lines. It's called The Worst. Behind me in the cluttered store, the air is filled with the smell of iron and something else, along with the scent of old books. I can almost feel it on my tongue. It is coming from the warm pool of blood, oozing from the cracked skull of the old man's corpse. He did not know that he was living in his last hour of existence, but he was killed regardless. And in an instant, the entire small building became empty, except for the presence of the murderer. Yeah, you can hear him. In front of me, up these stairs, and in the small bedroom which had been a home to the old man. Guess what he is doing now. His name is Mark. And an hour ago, he was telling himself that he would not actually kill the shopkeep. I expected someone to die here today. That is why I came right from the deathbed of a woman who was a lot like Mark. I am here to help. Ah, he closed the door on me. That is not how it works. I didn't... It can't be... He... He... It, w- it wasn't... You cannot Jesus. pick a lock. Do you want me to tell you where the key to that chest is? Because you are not able to pick locks, and you are not going to kill me with those tools, or anything. But you are right. He keeps good stuff in that chest. So just ask me where he keeps the key, and I will tell you. I, I wouldn't kill you. The old man's medication is just... Medication? Dear God, you are robbing this place, and I am aiding and abetting. See that cabinet with his shirt thrown on top? Wait, why are you doing this? Who are you? Get away from the door. Focus, Mark. I am helping you. I know where the dead old man kept the key. I know that the girl who works here on the weekends will be arriving in 20 minutes, and I know that you cannot carry that chest out of here. So get the key, grab the valuables, and let's go. I'll help you carry some of it, but you need to hurry. Oh, oh, you want in on this? You, you're going to kill me and take it all for yourself. I do not want your money. And I do not intend to kill you. I do, however, want in on this. I benefit from your succeeding. It is in my nature. Oh, yeah, sure. How how would this benefit you? What was that little thought that flickered in your mind? What did you just call me? Yes, you are from a religious family. Mark... You should be able to recognize me. You can't be. Get in that corner. Get in the corner. You are you are some creep who snuck in and, and just... And this is when Mark wasted a few vital moments of his time, shouting at me and considering framing me for the death of the old man. Of course, in that daydream, he is rewarded with an unreasonable amount of money. And for a moment, he forgot how much serious trouble he was actually in. Okay, you are running out of time, Mark. At this point, it would be wise to just run. No one saw you come in the shop, and the streets are still pretty empty. You could sneak away. The police might think it was some sort of revenge killing. I mean, someone probably hated that old man. I would maybe just grab something for your troubles if I were you. But you need to just hurry. I'm not taking your help, no matter what, but you're not the devil. Sure I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Well, basically, but yes. 
You know me. You're here for my soul. Mm, I do not really care about your soul. You can keep it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I am here to help you. Shut up. If I let you help me, I go to hell. That's how this works, isn't it? First, that was bad grammar. Second, yeah, I think that is how it works. But third, you just murdered a man during a robbery. It was an accident. He jumped at me. You are already damned. But I will tell you how to get out of going to hell. I didn't murder him. Mm-hmm. Sure, Mark. Listen, finish this crime and leave. Now. Or else you will be caught. If it makes this easier for you, all you have to do is repent. No hell for you. That seems wrong. No, it totally works. I am not lying. I want you to live your life. The light side just wants you to become devoted to it, remember? And I'm all right with that. You have already ruined this day for a bunch of people, so I am pretty happy. I just want you to get going. You can get away with this. Okay, okay, fine. Doesn't matter. The key is in the cabinet. Which drawer? Wait, no! Oh, Christ! Shut up! I'm not going to take advice from Satan. I don't want your help. This is... I'm not evil. Life is a trap with time and food and money. Choices aren't freedom. No one's free. I'm stealing because I needed to... Why are you here? Because I thought that otherwise you would be caught for sure. I am helping you. If you take something worth money and leave, or just run out the door now, it does not change much. You are going to do this sort of thing again, because that is what you will always do. You sin, say you never will do something like that again, then you do it the next time you have some excuse. You tell yourself that it did not really matter, that it was not so bad, that it was not evil, just morally gray. And I benefit from this. So when you are finally dying, when you face the fear of your body betraying you as it is no longer able to function, like the old shopkeep did when he hit his head on the corner of that credenza, when all that you are begins to fall apart, the afterlife will become very real to you, and you will probably repent out of fear. Earnestly, honestly, you will devote yourself to God, and then you will be forgiven and accepted into paradise. Because, in the big picture, that is apparently what matters. It is an ecosystem, and I am making sure that it is healthy for as many of us as possible. I do not need crimes to be committed for me to get by. Some laws are good for me. I just want things to be crappier for everyone, with every passing day. You're only interrogating me because you want me to be right. You want me to give you permission to finish this deed. So do it. I'm not going to do it again. This is the worst I have ever been. I was going to invest the money and that's it. I don't want to hurt people. Cool, invest away. But this is practically the same thing you said when you started pickpocketing four years ago. Everything I've done hasn't been to hurt people. I shoved the old man because I... I didn't want him slapping me anymore. I robbed him because I didn't want to be poor this Christmas. I pickpocketed and scammed and whatever because I was getting by. And I might have helped you every day of my life. But I didn't do it to help you. And now you are here and you're telling me that you're real and that this is good for you? You want me to be your weapon? Well, I don't want to be. I will not be as bad as you. What are you doing, Mark? You want me to get away? To not own up to this? Most of all, you think that if I'm not caught, I'll keep hurting people. And that if I'm not caught now, it'll hurt more than if I am. Maybe. I'm going to sit here, wait for the shop girl to show up, and I'll turn myself in. At this moment, dear listener, I could point out to Mark that letting the girl see the sight of a dead body would probably be a crappy thing to do. But I need a win today. So, Mark, decades in prison, if you are lucky. Yeah. Is that the knife that you threatened him with? I wasn't going to kill him. It would not hurt to hide the weapon in with those antique knives over there. 
You could pretend you never brought it, that you two just got into a scuffle. It would look better. Hmm. Wow. You still have several minutes before the shop girl should be here. You still have a lot of options to choose from, Mark. I'm afraid that Mark's story has unfolded every possible way over the years. It's tough to tell which part of himself won, which idea he settled on. That time. I have a thought, but... Hmm. Here comes something interesting. Hold on. I think I know who it is. Horror on the Hawk was created and produced by William P. Erskine. The host of tonight's program was played by Ethan Brown. The Worst was based on Robert Louis Stevenson's short story, Mark Heim, and was adapted for radio by William P. Erskine. It starred Adam Bryan as the devil and starred Alex Tessier as Mark. <laughs>